All right, guys. We're over here messing with the FD. Um, after taking a fat little quick trip around the block, uh, believe it or not, actually two things <laughs> broke. Um, neither one was the car's fault or anything. Uh, the fuel um, pressure regulator, fuel filter combo thing I was running, it's just like the factory replacement piece. Um, it actually started leaking. I don't know why. I think it's kind of just one, like, one of those weird things. Uh, and the other, you don't get to really get it in the video, but I think like I was in probably second gear and I just put it to the floor and it the tire spun, but the little br temporary brakes I had, uh, it was kind of my fault. I was just trying to, in a hurry, probably should just drove around the block and not done anything stupid, but uh, it actually bent and allowed the front of the rear end to come up and the drive shaft got into uh, some things, ruined some stuff, but it's no big deal. Um, I'm actually in the process of making a new diff brace right now. I'm gonna show y'all what we got going on in the plan, show you the damage, um, but it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'm still glad I went for that little cruise. Um, I had a lot of fun. It's this car, you know, it hasn't been moved or, you know, had an engine in it and go under its own power for a very, very long time. So, <sighs> just me being impatient, I was tired of waiting. So, there was no way I was not going to take it around the block. And, you know, when I did, my immaturity kicked in. <laughs> I should have just cruised. But, you know, of course, you know, I wanted, I wanted to matter a little bit. But anyway. Oh well, um, I'll flip this around and show you the damage to the drive shaft and stuff. Uh, I've already fixed the uh, the fuel the sending or uh, geez, the fuel pressure regulator. But I did get a little bit of footage of that. I'll put that in here too, so you can see it. Um, yeah, flip this thing around, crawl up under here, and show you actually what happened. <laughs> Okay, all right, so now that we're up under here, um, hold up, I forgot something. All right, now that we're under the car, you can see the drive shaft right there. Kind of see, it's got this, this nice channel in it. Um, it's not supposed to be like that. Maybe you can see it. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, you can kind of see it like right there. That's where the part brake cable would go. That's what actually did the damage to the drive shaft. Um, it's probably all upside down in different flipped up angles. But it's the price of being on the ground. But uh, I called uh, the place that made the drive shaft for me. You know, they said they could fix it. It's no problem. Uh, but they said like aluminum's kind of high right now. So I might just. Um, might just get them to make me a whole new drive shaft for like you know chrome molly or something but anyway so here's the tabs that been on me last time and i basically just had a bar going straight across and it was hooked to the factory uh diff and all that stuff bent but i took i forgot what they call this but this is like the the factory fd arm that goes all the way to the transmission on the factory car you know the, the rotary engine and everything so I basically just took this thing packed it off and I'm going to use that so this should be strong enough not to break or bend like my other stuff did and I got some thicker metal for right here I had this piece of tubing laying around it has a nice bend in it looks like it's plenty thick a little rusty in there but it should be okay it's got a nice little bend in it I'm like cutting it working my way in right now to get that nice fit in it oop turn it the right way max it work but it's gonna be something like that and like I said it'll touch right here and I'm gonna brace up that little spot right there and cut and clean and trim all this up but that's what it's gonna be until I can uh, get the 8 rear end the Ford 8.8 put in here um, probably gonna invest in a better welder here very soon I'm gonna crawl out from under here real quick but yeah so that's the plan for now so I'm probably gonna invest in like some better fabrication stuff um, like I said I can make some basic little things but nothing major so I'll probably end up doing all the fabrication this thing myself um, so 
yeah. But anyway, just for now, I just want to get it all together and everything. But I'm gonna knock this, uh, knock this little brace out real quick, get it done, and uh, just get it 100% made, and then I'll show y'all what it looks like and everything, all that good stuff finished up. And uh, we might just take it around the block just to cruise around a little bit. I'm not gonna do anything stupid just because that that drive shaft is probably going to break. So I'm just gonna drive it around just to kind of play around with it. But anyway, we'll get this done. I'll get another drive shaft made. And the next video, you'll probably um, probably just put the doors and stuff on the car, like doors, the hatch, the the hatch glass. I'll probably just sit in there because it's got like some screws that'll hold it or nuts that will hold it. So I'll probably just sit it in there, get the rear bumper on it, just pretty much get the car put back together do some wiring stuff um, like I said there's going to be like a lot of a lot of car meets and little car shows and stuff like that like I said I'd like to have the car together just so I can do that and uh, just have it where it's all together and the parts are not like all over my yard and inside my house <laughs> and all this craziness so yeah but for now I'm going to finish this up real quick and uh, sorry the video is not really a lot of useful information or very entertaining right now but once we get the cars together and everything, it should get a little better, hopefully. But for now, I'm gonna finish this up and uh, show you what it looks like all done. So, all right, guys, that's what we got right there. Um, oh, there we go. A little better focus. I got some some big old whopper gaps to fill, but I think you'll be all right. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. And like right here on the side, I'm gonna cut all this out straight up, like at a nice kind of an angle. And I'm gonna put another pipe or another piece of tubing right through there. So it'll look a whole lot cleaner than that. Yep, this pretty much saved myself 400 bucks um, when I bought the swap kit. So it's probably not the best looking, but as long as it holds, it should be, should, I'll be happy with it. I don't think it's gonna break. I'd be very surprised if this breaks. Um, I kind of made it the way I did. So even if my welds do suck, um, you know, when you're doing a burnout or you're taking off or accelerating, it's gonna be pulling it's gonna be pulling the diff up, so it'll actually be pushing these pieces together. So I'm hoping that will actually keep it to, together. So, and with that bar right there on the side, it's gonna take a lot of stress off this thin piece of metal and kind of make it all through there. So I don't think this thing's gonna go anywhere. But anyway, I'm gonna get the welder over here, hold this stuff in place, tack it real quick, and uh, go ahead and get this thing welded and. Uh, as far as the pinion angle goes, like I said, I measured this off the old car from the front uh, to the, the ah, from where this brace is, whatever. I kind of measured it to make sure it was actually in the same place. Like I measured two different locations from the back of the diff to the subframe <laughs> and from the front of the trans or from the uh, the top of the diff to the uh, top of the floor right there. So it's probably not perfect, but it's going to be perfect enough. So that's all I care about. Like I said, I'm just tired of seeing it sit around. So. We're throwing this thing together what we got and we're gonna go have some fun all right guys that's what she looks like on the car got plenty of clearance on the on the drive shaft not so much right here um, I mean there's definitely a decent amount of room if it does hit you know I'll just take it and you know cut that freaking part of it off but this is solid mounted. I'll probably get some solid bushings in the back. But anyway, look, so this is just temporary anyway, because I'm definitely going with the, uh, oh, focus, there we go. I'm definitely going with the, the Ford 8.8, .8, so. But this should be fairly strong, because I mean, it's this is the factory bracing. This is the 94 or 95 rear subframe. Well, this car is a 94, I think, but anyway. Uh, I don't know what year, but they added this brace, so it should make this all very strong. So it shouldn't go anywhere, but anyway, I'm going to have to pull the drive shaft out and fix that little bit of damage right there and uh, basically bend that back straight and put the, uh, the part brake cables back in their place so they won't rub on the drive shaft but yeah i guess i'll get that knocked out real quick all right guys my diff brace is already stupid 
I don't like it. <laughs> I wish I'd have thought about this, but yeah, look, you can't get the drive shaft out without taking the diff brakes off. And that's garbage. That's who wants that, right? Anyway. But you can kind of see I've been straightening this guy up a little bit. Um pretty sure. Jeez. I'm pretty sure you can see it on the other clip how badly rolled up it was. Basically just been taking uh you know some adjustable pliers and kind of just putting them on there and tighten them down and kind of working it straight. Um, I don't even know if y'all be able to see this. Is this the right way up? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's straightened up pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to finish fixing this. Bending it out straight. And go ahead and put the, uh, the part brake cables in. And uh, run the part brake cable up to the front and all that good stuff. So, anyway. I'm going to get this knocked out real quick. And then we'll take it around the block. All right, guys, I hope you can make this out. Um, like I said, this is basically just a factory, you know, unit right here. But you can see this little foot, this little fitting that I got to press in there. If you tweak it, look at that. So that was definitely our problem. I don't know why it doesn't fit in there any better, but oh well. I'm going to disconnect all the lines and stuff and uh, go up top and show you the, uh, the new piece that's going to fix this issue, hopefully. So... Yeah, that thing was looking pretty bad though. I mean, it, it freaking made a puddle in like just, you know, seconds. So, all right, let me disconnect all this stuff and get gas all over me, which is awesome. So, great. Looking forward to that. All right, guys. I just took a bath in gas. This thing leaked like crazy when I took the lines off. But, um, anyway, um, this is what we got going on. These lines are just the factory lines. Um, I just cut the hard plastic uh, line off and just reused them. Um, never again, I've done it you know, several times with other cars, never had any problem out of them. But for some reason, this little aftermarket adapter thing I bought, like I said, it just, it seals perfectly fine, but if it gets any kind of pressure on it or tension to where it, it moves over a little bit, hold on, I mean, it's pulled out. I think that's what it is, if it pulls out, and gets tension on it I mean it's just it just leaks like crazy so maybe you can put something in there but I just went ahead and picked up this one this is just a factory replacement this is a basically a factory replacement aftermarket piece it's supposed to be a little bit better and you have you know AN it's adapted for AN lines which will eliminate a lot of leak spots like right, so they're already running a braided line from you know the main pressure the feed line whatever but I was just using the soft, you know, just a regular rubber hose and some clamps. It wasn't leaking here or even here. Like I said, it was right there. Um, but yeah, I had these like press, um, I think they call them like press locks or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, you know, once you push the rubber hose over there, I mean, it's not coming off. That's a pretty, pretty gnarly, you know, groove, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, got two of these. So I'm just going to put them down here for the soft lines. It'll match the bend of these guys. So. Yep, I'm going to get this done real quick and hopefully I'll fix any issues. I won't have any further issue. And plus it's going to make it a little bit, um, a little shorter too, so. You know, it's not going to be sticking like way out here like this one was. So, yeah. Alright, probably should have done this anyway, but this one's like $100. And I think this one's like 30 bucks. So, that's what I get for being cheap. But anyway throw this thing in there real quick all right we got a uh, get our lines on there and kind of full disclaimer you better eat your Wheaties before you try to put these things on there it is something serious it's definitely a tight fit I'm almost positive these things wouldn't go anywhere without these clamps but I just threw them on there as a uh, you know some safety but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the soft lines to the tank and uh, hook everything up and the fuel system will be done again for the second time. Hopefully this time we won't get any leaks or anything, but um, so I'll walk to the road and show you the puddle this thing made. Hold on a second. But here we go. I said it was leaking down the use of like a little bit of a trail, you know, going down the road. But this is where I was stopped the car and was talking 
and as you can see it made a, a pretty freaking big puddle coming into the driveway but yeah so that wasn't a small leak that's pretty that was pretty bad I don't know why this thing just cut off the barriers for about to die mess around back into the 350z or something anyway I'm gonna flip y'all around <laughs> Shut it off, so I'm gonna stop it. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Okay, we're rolling in using the engine for braking because, like, the brakes are just like gone. So, oh well. I swear I'm gonna throw this thing one day. <sighs> so close, but yet so far away. Anyway, I need to get like a friend over here so I can figure out what's up with these brakes. I'm pretty sure I cleaned the lines out pretty good, but anyway. <sighs> yeah, definitely need to bleed the brakes. That was a little sketchy, but anyway. All right, that's gonna be it for this episode. Not much entertainment, I know. Um, pretty much it's the same stuff you saw in the last one. Not less entertainment, because I can't do anything at all. But anyway, I'm going to, on the next video, we'll definitely get the brakes sorted, and uh, or we'll have the brakes sorted, have some body panels in this thing, have the wiring at least straightened up a little bit to where it's actually drivable. Cause I got wires like twisted together and stuff like that, just to test stuff out. But, yeah, it's coming together, though. But anyway, appreciate you guys for watching, like always. We'll see you on the next one.